Holy crap. Orc Slayer is a new first-person shooter on PS4 that was released at the end of last year for PC via Steam. It was made by a very small team using the Unity engine, and I give them props for such a small team creating any kind of game that ended up making it the PlayStation 4. I also give credit to the fact that the game is called Orc Slayer, and in it, you actually slay orcs. And that's honestly about the most positive things I can possibly say about this game. Orc Slayer is a 13 level first person shooter where your goal is to defeat a certain amount of orcs. There are giant columns that spawn the orcs and after you destroy a certain amount of orcs the column gets smaller and then smaller when you keep killing orcs until eventually the column is destroyed. Your goal in every level is to either destroy all of the columns and then go to the exit or once in a blue moon aka twice throughout the course of the game defeat a boss in which case then you've completed that particular stage. To destroy the Orc Horde, you have an automatic crossbow that has unlimited ammo. There's only a slight pause in between each of the bolts as they're being loaded in, but you don't see any sort of animation for it, and you can just keep holding down the trigger button in order to keep on firing. Throughout the course of levels, you'll come across things like lightning and fire upgrades for your arrows that you can then use to add an elemental damage set to your crossbow for a short amount of time. It doesn't usually last all that long, but you can actually upgrade this via the game's level up system. After killing an orc, they'll either drop nothing, a bit of extra health, or they'll drop the game's experience. Collecting enough experience will fill up a gauge, and once it fills up, you will level up or gain an experience point that you can then drop into one of a few various different categories that will either increase the reload time, the amount of damage, the amount of health you have, or the duration of elemental damage from one of the various elemental upgrades you find throughout levels. When it comes to the enemies, or the orcs, there's a few different kinds. You'll have ones with shields, ones without, ones with weapons, and ones without. Bigger, giant ones with shields that you'll have to maneuver around a little bit in order to actually land shots on. And then you have a few other types of enemies, including the floating pigs that consistently fire green fireballs out at you. You'll have some weird, decrepit-looking spider-like creatures, including also spiders. And then you'll also have absolutely one of the funniest things about this game, the suicidal exploding pigs. It's basically a pig inside of a TNT barrel that comes charging towards you. You can shoot it in order to activate the explosion away from you, or if it gets close enough, it will blow up. And you can get a mass amount of these coming to hunt you at one time with their ridiculous expression on your face, which will, no matter what, probably make you laugh or even have to pause the game at just the sheer craziness of what you're just witnessing. You do have a couple other weapons at your disposal besides the crossbow, including a torch that you can basically bludgeon some enemies with and break down barriers, as well as you also can get a sword to chop down some orcs, but it's pretty slow and ineffective, so I usually just stuck with the crossbow. There are three different difficulties for you to tackle, increasing the amount of damage and the like that you're going to be taking from the enemies. The levels themselves have no checkpoints, so if you end up dying, you don't even get an animation. Literally, your health bar runs out and it just says, you've died, and then you can start the level over again. Some levels are pretty long, and other ones are extremely short, so depending upon what level you're in, this can be more or less of an issue for you. The game took two, two and a half hours in order for me to play through, and that included me taking a couple of small breaks here and there, just because it is so monotonous and gets extremely repetitive after only two or three levels. If you're able to get through the whole 13 levels, you're going to be seeing the same exact orcs about a million times before you finally end up completing the game. A game like this, though, with a ton of enemies coming at you and that fear of trying to panic and run away. Essence of a classic Doom style game where you're just being overwhelmed by the demons of hell. That can be enjoyable. The problem is with this game, the enemies aren't enjoyable to fight. There's very little variety, not only in the enemies, but the way they end up attacking you, and they have extremely horrible AI. There is collision problems all throughout the course of the game with enemies consistently getting stuck or just turning around and walking away from me or just walking into a wall or not doing anything whatsoever. There's not even really attack animations for the enemies. If they get close enough to you, they end up causing you damage, but you don't really even get to see what they're doing to you. Other than the animals that end up having projectiles that fly at you, it's really difficult to tell exactly what is hurting you and when it ends up hitting you. 
They go along with the repetitiveness of the gameplay, monsters, and even the levels as you're going to be singing the same ones consistently. Music goes right along with that, hearing the same basic tracks over and over again for multiple levels in a row. And some of them are okay, you don't really mind, you can kind of drown out. And then there's other ones you're going to want to turn the music down all the way. But that's where you lie into a problem by pausing the game, because once you pause it, it nearly breaks this game. Normally, the game slows down and stutters all the time with some huge frame rate drops. It's a game where it's about you fighting a whole bunch of enemies all on screen at one time. That's its appeal. And there's no excuse with the graphics of this game for it to run as poorly as it does. But then when I came out of the menu and everything got 5 to 10 times worse, I was absolutely stunned that this game was even allowed to be on the PlayStation 4 at all. The frame rate and slowdown gets so bad at just a few enemies, and once that unpausing happens, the sound effects, along with everything else, completely go out of whack. With them not even registering when I'm firing to hear a sound, or taking out enemies, sound effects going in and out, or being out of sync, or just not happening at all. Walking around the game, you're going to get stuck on random corners when it makes no sense for it. Hills don't really work the way they should. Enemies end up getting completely stuck onto the hills as well, and you can easily pick them off like they're fish in a barrel, making a lot of the challenge almost obsolete in certain areas. This is the kind of game that gives indie developed titles a bad name. People are going to see this, and hopefully, even with its low price, they don't get tricked into accidentally buying it. There are other games with the same price point on the PlayStation 4, and heck, even games that are free, that are much more worth the time than checking out this game for PS4, or even on Steam, with even more plethora of absolutely atrocious games that end up making it onto Steam. One of the only few pluses to the game is it does have a relatively easy trophy list and has a platinum, which is surprising for a game as low price as it is. And I have to say the developers were at least intelligent to make sure that this game had a plat because I'm sure it's going to trick a few trophy hunters into at least picking the game up for that reason alone. But as of this review, the trophies don't work. They do pop throughout the course of gameplay, but they don't end up actually sinking and you can't look at your trophy menu to even see what trophies you have or which ones you're missing. And even with how awful this game is, it's not the worst game I've even played this year on PlayStation 4 as that still goes to the abomination known as Dog Child. I will be giving Orc Slayer a 2 out of 10 and the only reason I'm not giving it a 1 is because it is a really low price game and only $3.99, though I see it's $4.99 on Steam. I don't know why it's cheaper. The game has that platinum, so that's a plus for trophy hunters that are going to want to try to go after it, but honestly, it's not worth it. Not worth the $4, not worth having on your system. Even if this was free, I cannot recommend it to really anyone whatsoever. But anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this review. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.